Navisa Security is a solution from MergeTool.com. Uh, there's currently more than uh, 50 customers running it worldwide in more than 10 countries. So what is it? Uh, it's a complete solution for NAV security. It uh, works both in the Rotate and Classic client, uh, and the full application is available uh, in both places. There's really two pieces of it. The one is uh, field-level actions and data security. It's something that can't be done in standard navigation uh, with permission, and it actually allows to control access to forms and pages, uh, access to individual fields, on forms and pages. You can control the actions and buttons and uh, you can also filter data both on form and pages so you can limit what records and user can see. The other part of it is for roles and logins and that's a piece that already is in the vision but this one is a much improved application with a lot of tools that assist you in uh, creating new roles and setting up logins in an easier way. You can record permissions with the SQL profiler and uh, client monitor. It's possible to both groups, roles and companies. So when you are assigning maybe 30, 50, 100 roles to a uh, person and you need to do it in 10 different companies, it gets quite complex. By doing groups, you probably end up with a few permissions under each user. You can even have permission as another user so you don't have to maintain every user in the system. It also allows you to do restore points, so as you edit permission, you do it offline and then when you get ready to per publish it to live, it will do a restore point of your current permissions, so if something goes wrong, you can always revert back uh, to the previous one. It also has a very simple way of dealing with object level permissions. You basically only uh, specify the objects you uh, need to have extra permissions for and easy security maintain rest of them so the release code unit for example is a good example on that one where you don't want people to have uh, access to release there's really no other way than limiting the object for it and that's all handled by uh, easy security let's take a look at the way logins are maintained with the uh, in easy security. You would normally have to go to tools, security, roles, uh, database logins and Windows login. You don't do that any longer. Um, it's all done from inside easy security. You have in the login window you have both database and Windows logins in here and um, there's several features in here on the login. First of all you can put an expiry on uh, a login and uh, at that date there won't be any more permissions for it. The other thing you, is, you can do is you can set up permission as a user uh, ID. So if I look at Peter, and Peter is the same as John, I would just uh, set up that information that those two users are now maintained the same and I only need to change John and Peter will have the same permissions. If you look at access controls, I can go ahead and uh, take a look at that one. There's two ways of adding access controls you can use groups or you can use roles. Roles is what you used to in standard NAV where you go tools, security, roles and uh, you can add them one at a time. Groups is really a way to add multiple at the same time and in this case I have a group here called sales and I can see that it contains all and it contains some uh, of the roles in here. You can even within a group have other groups so if you needed to do a manager that needed to do the same as sales and maybe warehouse and purchase you could go in and add uh, those three groups together and now you had the role uh, or the group you would assign to the manager instead in here. But let's assign this one. Same way as you can assign uh, groups of roles you can also assign groups of company and I can of course pick one in here um, but I could also go in and say uh, all um, work companies or just all work and I can put in all work companies and then I can go down and add uh, multiple companies to my group of companies in here so I want Kronos International and I want uh, Kronos Recording uh, to be part of uh, my group in here. So now I have actually two companies in here and I can click OK and I take that one back in here. So this one is really 
a very simplified way. I had 13 roles and I had two companies. So this one have been 26 combinations that I would have to maintain manually in here. The other thing that is possible in here to actually put an expiry in also. So let's say that this person is actually going to do some uh, setup of data. So in the Cronus International Company, they need to have uh, super data in here. And But I want that to expire the 6th of June out here. So at that date, they don't have that permission any longer. It actually will not delete the line in here. It will only check this flag called no permissions. When that flag is checked, that permission will go away uh, after the next publish is done to the live system of these permissions. If I need later on to do it again, let's say they need it um, for a later date, I would go and uncheck the no permission and then I would change the expiry date and then I could have uh, the same functionality. So if somebody working um, as a manager when the manager is on vacation, it's an easy way of uh, remembering what to do. Um, but also to remember to take it away again when the manager comes back. So um, that's our options here for maintaining logins, ability to create groups of roles, groups of companies, and to have expiry uh, both on the access control, but you can actually also have an expiry directly on the user in here. If I go ahead here and update my login, it basically just means it's calculating all the information in here. I can see I got 27 roles and this one out here is what actually is going to be written to NAV at one point. So this one is a combination of role and company name out here. The other thing it did was it calculated something called summary permission. And with all these many permissions giving me access uh, to NAV, it can be hard to figure out what your total permission is. And that's actually what the summary permission is. So I can go in here and see an item ledger entry. I have read, insert, or indirect insert and indirect modify out here. In my vendor ledger entry, I only have indirect read permission. So I can't see the vendor ledger entries, but I can still calculate flow fields on top of them that is part of some of the roles in here. One of the nice things about this one is like in easy security, there's a where used in here. So if I click where used, I can actually see this one is, oh, this is assigned in 16 roles. And I can see this one is a role and this one is a level of permission actually in here. So it's a very easy way to figure out where certain permissions are coming from. And you can see it all over the place in here um, where that table actually is used. And, and the same exists for forms and other object types, of course. But let's look at how you actually record roles in here because one of the very time consuming things is to set up a role. And if I look at this one in here, I can see the sales and receivable role have um, 115 permission and my posting of a sales order have 94 permissions in there. And this one is actually only table data permission. There's not even object level. So if I wanted to have a new role in here, it should be a sales and receivable uh, and it should be uh, create sales order because I want to do a, a, a much finer level uh, of permissions in there. So I have a create sales order. And instead of recording directly into a role, Easy Security actually records to uh, a recording. And then you can go ahead and use that recording uh, many other places in the system. So if I need to have other roles that could create a sales order, I could go ahead and use that one. I'm going to use uh, SQL Profiler to do this recording. So uh, let's uh, switch to the SQL Profiler down here. And I'll go ahead and uh, start up a new trace in here. And I'll connect to my SQL Server. I'm using uh, an EC Security Profile in here. I could go in and say I only wanted to filter on certain users, for example, if I didn't want it to have um, every permission. Right now I'm running in single user mode, so I'll just start this one. And it now sits here and uh, it um, captures some transaction in here. And um, that's because I have an application server running in here also. Uh, but that's fine because as you can see later on, we can actually avoid getting these transactions in my security in here. So let's go back to my classic client and create the sales order now. 
the recorder is running, so it's recording everything that happens now. I'll select my customer. I can go in and also select the ship to address and maybe pick my item, two pieces. And that's basically all I want this one to uh, be. I don't want to do the release because that should really be a different role. So I could limit who have access to it. But uh, let's close this one and go to my SQL profile and stop my trace in here. And I'm going to save it as a XML file. And I'll go back into my uh, recorder in here. So it was sitting here and I will go select my uh, create sales order XML file in here. Oops. I should of course uh, go here and import my SQL profile trace. It now reads the trace and it finds out which tables, which users, which companies I actually used. And as it finishes the import, it will present me of a list of the different dimensions in here. It captures both object usage, so I know what object I executed and read from the database. Um, so I know which forms, which code units, reports, everything would be captured in this trace in here. It also knows what user it is, so when it finishes, uh, I can select the users here. The SQL profiler is available for all customers that have um, a SQL database. If you're running a native database, you can always install a demo environment and use your application code and run through and even do a recording that way. So you don't need to have uh, a SQL database for your live environment. You can still use the recorder in here. So in this case, I can see I had some from the classic client in here, and I want to include that one because that's me. Then I had a NAS running, and I don't want to include those ones. And then I have a NT authority down here, um, and I don't want to include that either. So uh, as I click OK, it took 240 permissions actually uh, to do this one. So if I go look at my permissions, I can see it uh, captured if I needed read permission, if I needed to calculate a flow field, if I needed insert, modify, delete. But it also captured what code actually executed. So I have all the code units, all the forms. If I ran a report, of course, it would also be in here. So that is my uh, recording in here. And uh, if I go um, and update my role now, as I have added my recording, my 240 permissions suddenly turned into 364. So if I actually go look at my permissions now, I can see I have some of them out here, say, recorded, like the payment terms, and I probably also had my item rate entry down here. But I have a lot of them saying additional. And this one is the result of the source code analyzer. It has scanned during the installation process the actual source code from this database, and then if you have insert to a table like the sales header, for example, all the table relations you get read permission to. All flow fields you get indirect read permissions to, like this one down here, for example. It even made a lot of page permissions because I recorded from the classic client, but it made this role work both for the classic and the rotor client actually. So I have both form and page permissions in here. So. Um, but let's go add this new role to uh, my system in here. So if I go to my role group sales, I'll go down here and add my new uh, role, create sales order. And um, I now need to change my live system. So if I actually go look right now under my database login, John, I don't have any permissions in here. And that's how I started out. So Right now, I have been working offline with everything I did. I could actually have a NAS doing the publishing, so the user that maintained permission didn't need to have security. But uh, I'll go ahead here and do it myself. And this one is just many changes. And I will then go here and hit the Publish button. First, I do a consistency check. Uh, and then it actually goes through and updates um, 
all my roles. So if I had a new customization added, when I reran my source code analysis, it would pick up those changes and it would actually correct all my roles. At the end, it creating a restore point. So before it changes anything in a life, it takes a snapshot of it. And then at the end, it writes a restore point to the live system and my permission has been published now. So if I now go look at John, I should be able to see that he actually now has a lot of permissions in here. One of them being my new role down here about creating sales order. And of course, Peter was set up to be like John. So if I go down and look at it, Peter also has my create sales order in here. So uh, yeah. The last thing I wanted to show here is actually the restore points. And I can, of course, go down here and do a manual one. So let's just create one here. And I want to take a snapshot of my live system. And my previous snapshot of my live system was just before I actually did something. So if I look at it here, I have uh, two restore points now uh, from the live system in here. Um, and I have a lot of differences in number of records. I could go, of course, here look at my roles, and I could go down and uh, look at uh, sales and receivables, might create new sales order, and I'll have all my permission. And this one sits in my restore points. But if I wanted to know what I actually changed in here, I have an option here to run a print function. And I'll go in and say I want to have this restore point, but I want to go ahead and compare it to my 54 in here. I want to compare and I want to have an indented format and I want to look at database login and the access controls and maybe a list of the roles also down here. And then click OK. This one, instead of actually printing as a report, it creates a data in a table in here and I can go in and see is my um, access control down here. Uh, I can see that I had number 54 and now have a new line 55. Under John, I added a lot of permissions down here. And I can go down and see under Peter, I added a lot of other permissions. And I can actually just use a function here to go look at the next change. I can see on the roles, I actually went ahead and created a whole new role in here. Um, and of course, I could look at permission all the other tables in here. But that's really the abilities of the restore point to be able to compare your permissions also. And of course, if I made a mistake, I could always go in here and say, hey, I want to write this restore point back to the live system, overlay the wrong permissions I created so people can keep on working and I can fix it later on to figure out what went wrong with my permissions in here. Easy security is available in uh, 3.6 or later executables, and uh, it's independent of the application version. So you can use it with a 2.6 application if you're still running that. There's only new objects, so you really don't require a merge at all. And currently, it's available in eight languages. Um, it's all the Western European uh, and um, North and South America languages available. Um, it can be really there's three different setups that could be useful for it. You can use only the login and restore portion, and that's $800. If you also want to be able to record the roles and the login and restore points, it's $2,000. Field level security can be purchased by itself, uh, and it's $2,400. If you decide to get the complete solution, both for roles, lock-ins, restore points, and the field level security, you uh, have to pay $4,000 for that one. MergeTool.com offer fixed price installations, and we also have support if, you do, if we do the installation. And there's no other NAV modules required to actually um, buy the easy security solution. If you want more information, there's a lot on it on uh, the MerchTool.com website. If you want a demonstration version or have other question, feel free to send an email to info at MerchTool.com and we will respond back. Um, and we can also do online demonstrations if you have more questions than normal.